All right, good afternoon again. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, a topic that's come up a lot lately, and that is managing hybrid mode fiber cables, um, specifically in campus environments and municipalities. This is something we're seeing more and more. And it also is a pretty good uh, kind of second part to the last webinar we did. So for those of you that have been with us before, uh, we also have a YouTube channel. We have a spot out on our support portal of videos and that uh, the last webinar is available out there. This one will be as well. So if you wanna go back and, and rewatch, if you wanna kind of pause to be able to see any of the information that we put up, you'll be able to do that. And we'll be uh, sending out the links for you uh, for that as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So I think the saying uh, here goes something to the effect of the best laid plans of mice and men. Uh, I think they often go awry. So let me just start by saying I am a planner. And when I say I'm a planner, I mean I have checklists that I use to keep track of all of my other checklists. So um, I, I, I'm a big fan of list, big fan of uh, being prepared. So about a year and a half ago at this point in time, uh, my wife and I find out that we're expecting. And let me go ahead and let you know, uh, by the way, she also is a planner. We, we get along well in this regard. So this is going to be our first child. And you can imagine the planning and the checklist onslaught that ensued. Uh, from two personalities like ours as we're getting ready to welcome our first child. So we've created lists for clothes. We have lists for bath, uh, things for furniture, for, for feeding, for diapers, strollers and stroller compatible car seats. You get the picture. On and on and on it goes. This also happens to be my mom's first grandchild. So she starts getting involved. Um, you know, at this point in time, we're starting to throw the budget out the window. And uh, with the help of, of my mom, we start filling up the house and assembling all the different things, right? We're putting together strollers and cribs and all of these things. And so now let's go ahead and fast forward just a couple short weeks um, to our next doctor's appointment. You know, I'm trying to watch that little black and white screen and make heads or tails out of what's going on can't really figure it out to be perfectly honest. And I hear the doctor say, well, no wonder you've been so sick. Congratulations, you're having twins. Now, please don't get me wrong here. We wanted two children and we were really excited for the twins. Um, they, they do run in the family, so it wasn't a complete and total shock, but they also weren't part of our original plan. Uh, now we need two of everything that we just got one of. Now, because we did want two children originally and we had planned ahead, we got a stroller that converts, you know, for two children, so we're good there, but we need to buy more seats. Uh, we need to get another swing, you know, two of most everything. Essentially, we needed to add capacity beyond what we had originally planned for. So you might be asking at this point in time, what does this have to do with why we're here today? And the fact is that just like that moment, when we found out we were having twins, you can't always see the need for added capacity ahead of time but you can try to be as prepared as possible for if, when it happens. You know, network managers always think that their network is suitable based on that original plan, and then there comes an unexpected expansion. And what I wanna do is go ahead and take a look at how to make sure that we're prepared when that time comes. So in today's presentation, uh, we're gonna cover the following. First off, we're gonna do a quick overview of the difference between single mode and multi-mode fiber optic signals and why you might de deploy a system that's a hybrid of the two. We're gonna look at the challenges um, that, that are presented in managing availability of fibers when you are managing a hybrid system. We're gonna take a look at the management tools that are likely already available to you or let you know uh, where you can get them if not. And then we're gonna do a, a demonstration of a sample workflow so that you can see those tools in action. All right, so let's take a look at the difference between single and multi-mode cables. Uh, by definition, and, and I took this off of fs.com, single mode fiber enables one type of light mode to be propagated at a time, while multi-mode fiber can propagate multiple modes. The difference between single mode and multi-mode fiber mainly lies in fiber core diameter, wavelength and light source, bandwidth, color sheath, 
distance and cost. So let's go ahead and simplify that. Uh, single mode fiber is better used for long distance runs, while multi-mode fiber is quite often a better solution for short distance builds. So why wouldn't you just use single mode everywhere? I get that question sometimes. And there's a couple of key reasons why you wouldn't. Um, first off, multi-mode supports and handles much higher data rates, albeit at a shorter distance. Second, the cost can be actually substantially less, as much as three times less at times, uh, mostly due to the cost of the transceivers and connectors. And so because there are meaningful use cases for each of these, we really are seeing more and more manufacturers building cables that are a hybrid of the two. So let's say uh, what I mean by that, if you had a size 48 cable, the first 12 fibers in that cable would be multi-mode, while the remaining 36 could all be single mode. And what does that mean for us as network managers? Well, we need a way to manage these hybrid cables in our network, right? And to easily keep up with the availability by mode per cable span. So I mentioned earlier, you know, during the last webinar, we talked about managing your fiber availability using a Crescent Link tool that tracks which fibers in a given uh, span are in use and which are available. Today we're focusing on using that exact same tool, but this time adding a slight twist, and, and this allows us to track each mode independently, even when they're in a, in a shared span. So many of you already have access to the tools that we're gonna be using to do this, but for those who don't, we're gonna take a look at them really quickly. Let's start off with uh, Esri's ArcMap. So either standard or advanced versions are gonna work for us here. Uh, if you're just getting started planning uh, a transition to mapping your network in GIS and you haven't ever used ArcMap before, if you're new to this platform, please feel free to reach out to us. I'll have that information up at the end of the presentation and, and we'll help introduce you to some of our great partners over there at Esri so we can get that conversation started. Now, once you have ArcMap set up, what we'll be using here today is the Crescent Link, Crescent Link desktop extension. And so this runs on top of Esri's ArcMap. Crescent Link's gonna offer you a set of communication network specific tools, including several that we use for documenting and visualizing network capacity, again, by mode here. So this started in Crescent Link 5.0.2 with the ability to report fiber fill by single or multi-mode when using the fiber fill batch tool. Uh, this does require seven new fields to be added to the SDM cable feature class uh, with short integer data type. And we'll have a link to, to documentation on this later in the presentation. So I'll share that with you. All right, and then finally, uh, last but not least, you're obviously going to need to make sure that you already have your existing network infrastructure and assets modeled. And in this particular case, one step further than we talked about originally with the fiber fill uh, is, is we need to make sure that we have uh, single mode, multi-mode, or hybrid um, designated on each cable segment. And then if the fiber uh, is, if that particular cable is hybrid, we need to know which strand in that particular cable is your starting multi-mode strand. All right, so now we have the backstory in place. Let's go ahead and take a look at how some of these tools work live. I'm gonna pull up ArcMap here and we have a little uh, university uh, campus kind of being planned, right? I'm just in the beginning phases of building out. So we're gonna look at this to, to set the scene here from the standpoint of we haven't, we, we haven't broken ground yet. We're just starting to plan this network for this particular campus environment. And again, we see this in, in municipalities and in campus environments, mostly using these hybrid cables. So as I'm sitting here planning this out, I wanna go ahead and start thinking about where would be my best use cases for these mixtures. So what I'm doing is as I'm building my cable out, you can see I have a, a span here that's running a ring around campus. And if you look, I've set that to single mode. So I know that I've got this ring running around the single mode. However, as I come down here into campus a little closer, I might have a data center that's next to, um, you know, uh, uh, an area that's going to be connected directly to that data center where multi-mode would be a great option for me. And so 
as I'm coming in here and planning, you can see that I have multi-mode, but as I'm feeding these, I'm gonna have some of these hybrid cables, which I actually uh, set up to be called mixed. You could also utilize hybrid here for the mode. So as I'm coming in, I have these mixed. The other thing that we have to do, as I mentioned earlier, is make sure that we come in here and tell it what is the first fiber that is going to be your multi-mode. So we're single mode down to X and then we're multi-mode from there. So I have a field in my network here where 13 is gonna be my first multi-mode. That means one through 12 are single and then we're peeling off 13 on are gonna be multi-mode in this particular 24 count fiber. And so as I'm building this out and I'm planning, and again, I'm peeling off my multi-mode here um, and, and I'm pulling off to go to maybe my research center that's connected over here to this data center. I wanna keep track and make sure that I don't need to up the size or you know, order a different spec as I'm planning out for this network that's gonna have this hybrid system. But what I'm able to do, and again, this is a tool that we looked at last time, is I can come in here and I can run my fiber fill batch tool. Now this tool can either be run on my entire network at once, or if I have a selection of cables and I run that tool, then it's just going to run it on the cables that I have selected. So depending on the size of your network, that can be really useful um, really for time purposes, right? To, to make sure that happens very quickly. So now as I'm building this out, what I'm gonna do is come over here to my table of contents. You can see here's my normal fiber cable that I have set up, kind of my typical uh, way of sim symbolizing my cables. And I can go ahead and actually turn that off. And now here's the tool that we looked at last time. This is my fiber availability heat map. So if I turn that on, you can see I have this really simplified and where do I have less than 10% availability in my cable based on what I've connected at this point in time. Then in orange, I have everything that's between 10% and 50%. And then all of my green, I have over 50% capacity. And so that's our typical kind of fiber availability heat map. And there's a couple of different ways to do this. I'm just utilizing a percentage here. Now you can see I've added two new layers here. One is my single mode availability and the other is my multi-mode availability. So now depending on if I'm already planning again for an area where I have a data center at a research park, um, I can come in here and turn on just my multi-mode and I can see very quickly, obviously these were single mode cables, right, going around my ring. So I knew that I didn't have any multi-mode availability there. But I can also see that I'm starting to run low on multi-mode availability as I come through where I'm feeding from this hybrid cable up to my multi-mode that's, that's running in between. So I might know that it would be a good idea for me to go ahead in my plan and bulk up. Or on the flip side, if this is existing network and I know that there's gonna be a new build going on, you know, our, our work is never done, especially in a campus environment. Uh, this thing continues to grow and grow and grow. Uh, you know, we would know that we might need to go in and do a little overbuild here at this point in time to make sure that we're prepared and we don't get kind of caught out in the rain uh, when the time comes to connect up to a, a new piece of our research park over here. So that's our multi-mode. I've done the exact same thing with our single mode. So if I go ahead and turn off that multi-mode just for ease of view here and I turn on my single mode you can see that exact same uh, thing just now based on which cables are single so again you know I had my ring with single and it looks like I have plenty of availability in my ring at this point in time based on the way that I've modeled this um, you know I have my yellow modeled where I might be running a little low I might want to go ahead and beef those up in my plan before we get under construction to make sure we're prepared for later and then you can see specifically out here where I have my multi-mode cable of course I have no single mode out there because I went from my hybrid uh, peeled off just the multi modes out of my hybrid and and started planning out to these particular locations around that data center and so that's the use case for this tool is to very easily based on uh, those numbers. And again, if I were to uh, click, let's say a multi-mode here. Let me turn my layer back on. I didn't have that other layer selectable. If I turn this mode, uh, multi-mode back on, we can come down here and, and again, we can see multi-mode. And so at this point in time, they're all gonna be multi. 
versus mixed. All right, and so that's the general use case for this tool. Again, the, the key is having these fields set up properly and then running that fiber fill batch. Just one second, trying to get my link back up. So I told you that I'd share some links with you that I think are gonna be helpful. First off, again, uh, this video will be posted on our YouTube channel, as well as at our video library. So if you are watching this you know, um, later, then, then you'll be able to pause these slides and see them. Otherwise, know that our video library is at support.geograph.tech. Uh, and if you go into the resources section, uh, you can find the, the videos and webinars section or you can just search us on YouTube to find it if you want to go back and rewatch this later and we'll be also be sending a link out. Also want to talk about, you know, we have a couple of support articles that are going to be really great for helping you set this up. Now, of course, that's in addition to you always having us as a resource. So please feel free to reach out to us and I'll share that information with you in just a minute. But right now I've got Gray with me. He's been kind of moderating things as we're going through this. And at this point in time, uh, he's been kind of taking a look at the questions as they come in. I'm going to ask, uh, Gray, have we had any questions that have come in at this point that I can, I can help answer? Uh, yeah, we do have a few, um, couple, couple questions here. Uh, one of the users or attendees asked, um, did you mention that we have to add new fields to use this on our cables? Um, they said, do you have a list of those fields and how do they add them? I had a feeling that question was going to come up and it's a good question. So let's look first at how we would add those. So I'm going to go back and pull up. We're kind of getting down into the technical weeds a little bit here, but for anybody that's interested, um, just hang with us and we'll go through this. So you notice that I have these fields added here and you very well may not have those in your database at this point in time. In fact, you, you probably don't. And so the ones that we're going to be looking at specifically are for fiber fill batch. I've got a group here and I, was, I actually made a slide for this. I had a feeling this might come up. I've got a group here for fiber fill batch and then another group down here at the bottom. Now to add these, all we're going to do is go to art catalog and keep in mind, if you're in an SDE or an enterprise environment, um, you, you likely can't do this, uh, you know, from within ArcMap this way, you probably need to be the data owner and to go through Art Catalog uh, as the data owner. So we may need to identify who that is, who has the ability to, to make modifications like this. But what I'm gonna do is go in and find uh, SDM cable, and then go to properties. And then I'm going to go to fields. And you can see right here where I have added those fields, and I'll show you a list of them again in just a second. So you'll be able to pause it and look at them if you need to, um, or there's a support article for it. You can see where, I mean, you literally just go in and add these fields as long as you're the data owner, or if this is a file geo database living directly on your machine, then you would have access to be able to go in and do that. Now, as far as what fields those are, let me get that back up. Skip a couple slides here. Here we go. So here you can take a look at the fields that are required just for fiber fill back. So we have fully connected, half connected, and not connected uh, written just like this. And all three of those are going to be short integer. And then we have utilization date, which is a date for the data type. Then there's a couple of other fields that are optional, but I'd say go ahead and add them. So again, this is just specifically for fiber fill. So that's your total connected is a short integer and then your percent available and your percent used, both is double for your data type. Now specific to the hybrid mode cables, we have, and these are all short integer, and since there were multiple of them, um, I went ahead and let them spill over. They're all gonna be short integer data type. And so we have the starting MM strand, multi-mode, single mode fully connected, single mode half connected, single mode not connected, same with multi-mode, fully connected, half connected, not connected. So once you have those set up, then it really is as simple as making sure if you only want to see the, the fiber fill as I showed right here with the heat map, we're just going to go in and we're going to run that fiber fill batch tool. And again, depending on the size of your network is how long this might take to run. If you do want to be able to see 
your hybrid cables, then that's where we would need to go in and make sure to add your starting multi-mode strand uh, to, to all of those hybrid cables. And of course, um, you know, we can do a, a sort and find all those cables that you have put in as hybrid and, uh, you know, take care of that pretty easily. If you have any trouble with that, feel free to reach out. So hopefully that helped. Uh, great question. Awesome. Yeah, and I'll, I'll put this out there to you guys too. Be sure if you have questions, um, go ahead and send those in. We can try to get to them. And of course, if we can't here today, we'll be, we can uh, answer those uh, offline here. But another attendee asked, uh, how did you get the cables um, in your map, presumably, to show up uh, in those different colors? Okay, so the symbology that, that we have set up, it sounds like. So let's take a look really quick. So I have multiple different symbology set up for the exact same layer here, right? It's all of my cable, it's all of my fiber cable. And so let's not uh, worry about the normal fiber cable. Let's first look at the regular heat map. So if I come in and I go to the properties of that layer, which is just a copy paste of my fiber cable, and I go to the symbology tab, I'll kind of walk through I have the, how I have this set up. Over here under show, I have quantities and then graduated colors. And I'm showing percent available. Now remember I mentioned this is pretty configurable. So I could have shown this by whole number. If I wanted to know when I have less than four, you know, less than two pair available, I could have done it by number. I instead have it set by percent. I did a color ramp and then chose my colors. So I did a, a red, orange, green on this. And then you can literally go in here and you can set your percentages, you know. So I did uh, less than 10% red, 10 to 50% orange, 50 to 100 green. Now, if I go down and look at my single mode and go to that exact same tab, right? So you can see, and I didn't need to do anything in my definition query here. I just simply went to symbology. Again, quantities, graduated color. For the value, I used my single mode half connected because uh, that's what I consider available if it's half connected. Uh, normalization none here. I did classes three and then I let it choose the breaking points for me. You can see I did the, the natural breaks, and then I just chose the colors again. So you can go in here and you can double click on these, and you have the option to, cho to choose your symbology along with the width of the line, the color, the type of line, all of those things. And so again, zero to five, six to 18. So for this one, for my single mode available, I did single mode half connected. And you'll see I did a similar thing with multi-mode. So if I come down here, and take a look at multi-mode. We did graduated colors, multi-mode half connected, and everything else remains the same. And so that's how I set that up. And so now once I have these layers on, I can come in here and I can just click these on and off as I need to. And now anytime that I run the fiber fill batch and those numbers get updated in the attributes, that's gonna automatically update for me. And so those colors will, will adjust, you know, accordingly on the individual fiber string. All right. Again, hopefully that answered your question. That was a good question. Yeah, and I think we have one more. Uh, time for one more, too. Um, so this, this attendee asked, they said, I only have options for SM and MM, single mode and multi-mode. Um, how do they add hybrid in particular? Okay, and that, that's honestly probably a, a good question for everybody. A lot of people may have that exact same setup going on right now, especially if you got the kind of out of the box uh, Crescent Link data model, it was set up with single mode, multi-mode. So what I'm gonna do is again, you may, may very well need to be the data owner if you're in enterprise for this, just like adding the fields earlier. But I'm gonna come up and uh, really just go to the properties of any of these. And what I want to do is go to uh, subtypes, and then I'm gonna go down to domains. And now I'm going to look for SDM fiber cable mode, I think is what I'm looking for. SDM fiber cable, there it is, right there. So you can see SDM fiber cable mode. Um, and, and this is where you would put in the code and the description. I have them matched here. You can see I put in mixed uh, in my particular data. You could add hybrid. If you don't have any of these three, you could add them all in. And then, you know, once you save this, um, you'd be able to go back in and start utilizing these fields. 
And this is great too because then you can do things like search for all of your multi-mode cables or all of your single mode cables, right? So I could come in, I could look at the table, uh, my SDM, uh, sorry. I can open my attribute table and I could, you know, go in and find my mode gauge equals uh, mixed, or, you know, again, yours might say hybrid and apply, and now it's going to select all of those cables that I have in my system currently as hybrid. And so, you know, if I were needing to go in and find all of those very quickly, I could do that from there. All right. Uh, Gray is shaking his head that there are a couple more questions, but at this point in time, I'm going to start wrapping it up just so I don't run anybody late. Uh, I really appreciate everybody coming out uh, and joining us. Let me get over here. So as I mentioned earlier, um, if you have any questions about anything that you saw here today, anything that we've done in the last half an hour, please feel free to reach out to us. You can reach us directly at sales at geograph.tech or uh, our phone number is 1-800-674-4803. We'd love to hear from you. We'll be sending out, again, a link to the recording. It'll be available on our YouTube channel as well as uh, in our videos and webinars section. Um, also, let us know if there's things that you would like for us to do a webinar on. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what topics interest you. So, uh, but you know, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, the couple of other questions that did come in, we will be reaching out to you uh, here in the next uh, day or two directly to, to answer those questions with you and walk through if you have, uh, you know, if you wanna get on a Zoom call and do a screen share, anything like that, we can help get you set up. So again, appreciate it. Everybody else uh, enjoy your day, enjoy the rest of your week, and I look forward to talking soon.